Coming up today, Korea's ruling party will elect its new leadership. This afternoon at its party convention, four candidates are in the running for the top post. South Korea provides China with its first official notification of its stance on the upcoming deployment of the THAAD missile defense system. Beijing is deeply opposed to the deployment. Plus, there's disappointment for Team Korea on day three of the Rio Olympics as the nation's medal favorites in men's archery and judo crash out. Stay tuned for these stories and more. Hello, it's noon on Tuesday, the 9th of August. You're tuned in to our midday newscast here on Arirang TV. Thank you ever so much for joining us. I'm Mark Broom. We are going to start this lunchtime with domestic politics, and it's a very big day for Korea's ruling Senri Party. A party convention is scheduled for this afternoon where members will elect a new leadership. The party is looking for a fresh start after a bruising defeat in April's general election. Our political correspondent Park ji has a preview of the event. Korea's ruling Senuri Party's fourth national convention will kick off at 2 p.m. on Tuesday to select a new leader as well as four new members of its Supreme Council, the party's main decision-making body. And for the first time ever, this year's convention will also select an additional special Supreme Council member representing the younger generation with only those under the age of 45 being eligible for the position. Currently, four candidates are vying for the top party leader post, while three of them, Lee jang hyun Lee ju young and Han sung kyo are known to belong to the party's inner faction close to President Park Geun-hye. The other candidate, Ju ho young comes from a faction that puts more distance from Park. All four candidates have vowed to reform the party, each saying he will eradicate the long-standing internal factional frictions that brought about the Conservative Party's loss in the April's general election. We can totally change Korean politics if I'm elected as party leader. We cannot elect as leaders those who were the main culprit of the general election's defeat. Our party cannot bear any more manipulations from within the party. Elect me as your leader to end the party's hegemony of those who are close to President Park. Some 9,000 delegates will cast their votes at the Jamsil Indoor Stadium in Sodon Seoul. Nearly 70,000 other eligible voters already cast their ballots at the nation's 252 voting stations on Sunday, and they will be added to the convention's vote. Results are expected to come out as early as 7 p.m. on Tuesday. Park Ji-won, Arirang News. Now, South Korea's ambassador to China has notified the Chinese government on Seoul's position regarding the deployment of the U.S. anti-missile system THAAD to the south. It is the first time South Korea has made its stance official to Beijing since the decision was announced last month. Gon Soa has more. South Korea's top diplomat in Beijing met with China's special representative for the Korean Peninsula on Monday to clarify Seoul's stance on the deployment of THAAD to South Korea. This marks the first time the South Korean government has delivered its position to China through an official diplomatic channel since the deployment was confirmed last month. Ambassador Kim Jang-soo and Wu Da-wei reportedly also exchanged views on North Korea's recent missile provocations. China seemed to be reluctant to punish the North for the tests due to its opposition to the THAAD deployment. China says it will undermine regional stability and the country's security interests. Ambassador Kim's move is being seen as a more active approach by the South Korean government to deal with China's intensifying criticism rather than its earlier defensive mode. It also appears to be a shift away from parliamentary diplomacy, which is an approach six main opposition Minju Party of Korea lawmakers have opted for as they traveled to Beijing this week. In an indication of the government's disapproval, a planned meeting between Ambassador Kim and the lawmakers was abruptly called off. Kwon Soa, Arirang News. 
Now, South Korea and Japan are holding talks today on Tokyo's pledge to compensate the Korean victims of Japan's wartime sexual slavery. Seoul's foreign ministry says the ministry's director general for Northeast Asian affairs and his Japanese counterpart begun talks in Seoul this morning to discuss follow-up measures to the landmark Comfort Women deal reached late last year. This is the first such meeting after the Reconciliation and Healing Foundation for the Victims was launched in Seoul last month. Japan is to deliver the roughly 9.8 million US dollars in compensation through that foundation. So let's take it to Rio, where it is day three of the 2016 Olympics, with a number of events held on Monday. Team Korea was on the end of some shock defeats in men's archery and judo. Let's turn to our Ian Shin, who's keeping up with the action for us. Ian Shin, some highlights, but overall a pretty frustrating day for Korea's athletes. That's right, Mark. With a couple of impressive displays but more disappointing losses, day three of the Olympics wasn't exactly a great day for Team Korea. And although some question remain over whether the nation can finish in the top ten of the medal rankings, Korea still has high hopes for all the remaining athletes. Here's a wrap-up of Monday's action, starting with archery. Fresh off her triumph in the team event, 2012 Olympic champion archer Kibo Bae got off to a comfortable start in the tournament round. Now set to compete in the round of 16 on Thursday, she cruised past her Kenyan and Ukrainian opponents in the rounds of 64 and 32. But on the other hand, in a huge upset, top-ranked archer Kim Woo Jin crashed out in the second round of the men's individual event. Indonesia's Rio Agafa beat the 24-year-old Korean superstar six sets to two. Agafa's world ranking? A relatively low 29. Despite setting a world record in the ranking round and snagging an impressive gold in the men's team event, Kim's competitive action in Brazil ends here. Also knocked out of the Olympics on Monday were two of Korea's rising judo stars. Competing in the 73-kilogram category, world number one An Chang-nim lost to his Belgian opponent by half a point in the round of 16. Many predicted a gold medal from An as he had never lost to Dirk Van Tickelt in their previous matches, but victory went to the Belgian. Another of Korea's medal favorites, Kim jan di competing in the women's 57-kilogram class, suffered a shock defeat to a tough rival from Brazil, Rafaela Silva. And finally, Korea's women's volleyball team were hoping to keep the momentum going following their victory over arch-rival Japan, but they lost to Russia on Monday. It was a very close match until Korea lost to third set. Third set. The boost helped the Russians cruise home in the fourth, winning their three sets to one. The Korean women's next game is against Argentina on Wednesday local time. And that's the wrap-up from Monday's action. And now let's take a look at what's on the schedule for Tuesday. The focus of the sporting world is on Rio with the 2016 Olympics in full swing. But Korea has one eye on the next Olympics to be hosted in the alpine town of Pyeongchang. The, organiza the organizers of the 2018 Games are busy promoting the event in the 2016 host city. Our Shin Se-min files this report from Rio. Connecting the passion brought on by the Rio Olympics to the upcoming Pyeongchang 2018 Winter Games. That's what Korea's Winter Games organizers, the Korean Tourism Organization and the Tourism Ministry are hoping for at the moment while in Rio. The distance and the 12 hours time difference means nothing to us because the Olympic Games are the very festival where people across the global globe meet and build friendship regardless of distance between countries, location, religion, 
or race. Time is of essence for the Pyeongchang Organizing Committee with less than 550 days to go until hosting the next Winter Games. The Pyeongchang 2018 house located on Kobakana Beach has brought a piece of the next Olympic host city to Rio. And thanks to Korea's cutting-edge technology, visitors can get a first look at the silver snow-covered city of the next Winter Olympics. Offering an opportunity to try out winter sports like ski jumping through a four-dimensional virtual reality simulator, visitors can feel a step closer to the Alpine city while being under the tropical sun of Rio. And Korea's wireless carrier KT unveiled the world's first ever fifth generation network that connects two very different cities halfway across the globe simultaneously. Such efforts, according to the IOC coordination commissioner, are necessary to drum up support for the next Olympics. It's a very professional exhibition here and you said the new technique is fantastic. And here you have the whole world coming and uh, they know we have the summer games but uh, Pyeongchang is the next one and to come up and uh, it's uh, very good with this promotion. While speeding up preparations for the Winter Games with a series of test events lined up this November, Pyeongchang Olympic organizers in Rio are embodying the spirit of the Games, at least for now. Shin Semin, Arirang News, Rio de Janeiro. Now, in the rest of the day's news, Korea's trade ministry says it will work to reduce the number of sanctions leveled against Korean industries and resolve ongoing disputes. The remarks come after the Korea Trade Association reported Korea is on the receiving end of over of around 180 trade sanctions by 31 countries. Now, anti-dumping regulations were the most common sanctions at 125 cases. Safeguarding, or the act of placing tariffs on imports that could damage the domestic market, was second with 47 cases, while anti-subsidy duties ranked third with seven cases. India has filed for the most sanctions against Korea with 32 claims, followed by the United States with 23. The steel and metal industries were the most common target with 87 sanctions, followed by chemical companies, textiles and electrical goods. The Korean government says there are lingering uncertainties that could pose a threat to domestic demand, which has recently been lifting growth amid faltering exports. Now, this all came from the Finance Ministry's monthly economic assessment, which was released on this Tuesday. The government predicts that, that its corporate restructuring drive and the expiration of a tax cut on automobile purchases, coupled with uncertainties about the fallout from Britain's decision to leave the EU, could dent consumption. With that, the report emphasises the importance of swiftly implementing the government's extra budget plan. Now, in international news, a suicide bomber has killed scores of people and wounded even more at a hospital in Pakistan. But the Pakistani Taliban and the Islamic State militant group have claimed responsibility for the attack. Oseong reports. A bomb attack at a hospital in Pakistan's southwest has left at least 70 people dead and 120 others injured, many seriously. The suicide bomb is struck as a crowd of lawyers and journalists crammed into a hospital in the city of Quetta. The group had gathered outside the emergency room to mourn the death of Bilal Anokasi, a prominent lawyer and the president of the local bar association, who was shot earlier in the day. As soon as I reached the gate, there was a blast and people came running out. I left my bike there and as I entered, I saw dead bodies scattered all over the place. There was blood all over and injured people covered in blood. A splinter group of the Pakistani Taliban, Jamaat Ara, has claimed responsibility for the bombing, as well as the shooting of the lawyer, pledging to, quote, continue carrying out such attacks until the imposition of the Islamic system in the country. The attack was also claimed by the regional branch of ISIS. The motive is unclear, but watchers say lawyers have been targeted during a recent spate of terror-related killings and militant violence in the area, linked to separatist conflicts as well as sectarian and ethnic tensions. Quetta is also known to be the base of the Afghan Taliban. Also young Arirang News. Now, with the U.S. election just under three months away, the latest poll gives Hillary Clinton a solid lead over her Republican rival Donald Trump. 
looking to close the gap and put his campaign back on track. Uh, Trump gave a speech on Monday where he laid out his economic policies in detail. Kim il gyun has more. The CNN poll of polls, which tallies the results of six major polls conducted after the Democratic and Republican conventions, revealed on Monday that Hillary Clinton has a 10-point lead over Donald Trump. In a two-way race, the polls have Clinton with an average of 49 percent support and Trump at 39 percent. The margin remained the same with 45 percent for Clinton and 35 percent for Trump when third-party candidates Gary Johnson and Jill Stein were included. The figures reflect a big increase in the number of Clinton supporters when compared with pre-convention polls. However, CNN said it's still far too early to make a prediction since the conventions were held in early July, giving voters a lot of time to change their minds. On Monday, the two candidates clashed on the economy as Trump delivered his economic address in Detroit. He promised to lower the corporate tax rate and withdraw from the Trans-Pacific Partnership trade deal if he's elected president. All of our policies should be geared toward keeping jobs and wealth inside of the United States. Under my plan, no American company will pay more than 15 percent of their business income in taxes. At a rally in Florida a few hours later, Clinton said Trump's tax plans would give big tax breaks to large corporations. We're going to make the wealthy pay their fair share in taxes for a change. And I, I have said throughout this campaign, I am not going to raise taxes on the middle class, but with your help, we are going to raise it on the wealthy, because that's where the money is. Clinton is set to offer her own economic vision in a speech in Michigan on Thursday. Kim mo Arirang News. Well, that's where we are going to leave it on this Tuesday afternoon here in Seoul. We have more news coming up at 3 p.m. Korea time, so uh, stay tuned for that. Have a great day. Goodbye.